Welcome back once again to the Kevin Pollack Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. And you? Not. I'm waiting for them to say their names. Oh. Jesus. I'm Chat Show, and you are? Phil. Nah. Nice to hear from you. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> yeah. It sounded yeah. like you may have recently had surgery. Th I think you said Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil. You think he said for I, I heard sure. Phil. There's television Sam Levine, ladies and juice. Sammy. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, how Did are you? Did you start work on the YouTube Red production yet? No, that's uh, n uh, two weeks. Uh -huh. um, I was working on a, the, uh, the Verizon Go 90 series. Well, now you're just bragging. This week. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yep. Wow. Uh, how many was, t was it? Our friend Beth was telling us 300 pilots were greenlit this this season or something what was it something ridiculous there's so much content between all the ways that you can yeah, it used to be content. 80 from the it's various networks now it's 300. 300 yeah this year this calendar year this calendar yeah. year there has been yeah 300 pilots greenlit yeah which is never what an unemployed actor wants to hear so there were 300 opportunities <laughs> that right. I swung in a minute and i read for zero of them great yeah great the passwords are new agent mm -hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> And Jamie, you're well? Do I, well, I'm not going to ask if I look well, because I'm sure somebody's going to have some smart-ass <laughs> comment that I look like a retard or a lesbian or something. So, yeah, um, not that those are bad things. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, those are, you know, could be paused. Oh, man, I'm really digging uh -huh, myself Oh, buddy, Woo! there's no getting out of this hole. Nope. No. <laughs> no, I'm well. Yes. Very well. I'm getting through this giant coffee. It's amazing. That's helping. Yeah. And we found a new bowl place this morning. I actually fell for an Instagram ad, but I got myself a free acai bowl. Didn't even know how to pronounce it. Didn't even know what it was. Basically, Still not sure. Basically, I think it's like a deconstructed smoothie in a bowl. It was very filling and very but delicious. But the acai is a berry. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> all right, well, that's the catch-up time. That's all we have time for. Um, j Max not here. He might be watching live. Should we talk about him just for a moment? Nope. Uh, we're coming to you live from the West Side Comedy Theater, as we do these uh, couple of years now. Please, if you're ever in the Los Angeles and West Side area, do yourself a solid. Check out the westsidecomedy.com website and first see what shows are happening. Uh, Neil Brennan does a regular show here. Sketch Improv Amazing Shows here. Our friend Dana Carvey on occasion as well. Write to us, you sons of bitches. KPCSfanmail at gmail.com. Once again, KPCS, as in Kevin Palachacho. Fanmail at gmail.com. I will read one of your emails. I just wanted to let you know I found the cure for insomnia. Oh boy. I think I see where this is going. <laughs> All I need to do is snuggle up and play the Jane Campion episode. There it is. And I nod right off. <laughs> Man, are you not alone? I love to laugh. Uh, any other interview? <laughs> I love to laugh. Our favorite quote from the interview. From the driest, not even a bone dry comes close <laughs> to Jane Campion dry. Uh, any other interview is scintillating. I listen to those at work to entertain myself and stay awake. Either way, you're doing me a solid thank you, Elizabeth Arahood. Arahood. A A R I Hood. Arahood. Arahood. Smith. Mm -hmm. Lacrosse, Wisconsin. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's lovely to hear from you, and I'm sorry I had trouble with your last name. Um, imagine my feeling during watching the World Series of Poker when a French fuck with the same spelling as my last name insisted on pronouncing it Pollock. Mm. Listening to the announcers say that over and over again. Uh, <laughs> should I read a Larry King game? We're doing so well. We really Not are. Not offending anyone. I think we should do it. Okay. Write into Larry King game to see if you can't win yourself a t-shirt like Richard Arisco. Risco. I'm sorry for squirming around here all night, but I'm moist and chafed because every time I hit one of those salmonella taco trucks, I start trout dipping like a Port-au-Prince beach hut in hurricane. Commando no more. Dribbling Brook, Arkansas, you're on. I don't think that's worthy of a t-shirt. Not just because I didn't read it terribly well. Yeah. Let's try another one. <laughs> I read that one, but I'm not sending a t-shirt in case you're waiting at home. You know what? No. I will not continue with this. <laughs> I've given up. Write to us, see if you can't do better. KPCSfanmail at gmail.com. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit now to that move that I tried earlier. 
Um, upcoming guests, you ask? All right. A week from today, Brian Cranston. Stewing that, you sons of bitches. Look forward to Jenna Fisher. She'll be wonderful. The wonderful Martha Kelly from the Galifianakis program. Baskets! Bob Saget and on October 29th, Mr. Ricky Gervais. My guest today, uh, uh, we've talked about the big slick at this table several times recently. Uh, Rob Riggle, Dave Koechner were guests from that. I feel like there was another one recently that we, um, oh, I, uh, away from this desk, had dinner with the uh, Joe Latrulio and the Beth Dover. Jaden Fox on makeup, thanks for stopping by. She's exiting. Uh, no need, if you'd have your own show ever, to do that. Um, <laughs> my first question for today's guest was, is not Big Slick uh, related, uh, which is, takes place, of course, as we've said many times in the Kansas City, but a question, uh, what life was like for a young William Josh Hopkins in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome, Josh. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Here for you, buddy. Uh, what was uh, life as a, as a youngster? in the Lexington, Kentucky? Pretty good. Lexington's <laughs> a good place to grow up. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't bullied, really. Right. Uh, not a lot of bad things happened to me. My parents loved me. My uncles never touched me. <laughs> things were good. <laughs> there were horses and bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, did you work the bourbon fields as a youngster? <laughs> I did. I, I used to... Um, Ho bourbon. Uh huh. Yeah, till the bourbon <laughs> fields all I'm the time. I'm not sure I've heard ho bourbon <laughs> in that order. Mm. Well, you've met a few bourbon hoes. Yes. In your day. Uh, when you were a kid growing up, was dad already a U.S. representative? Yes. Well, I mean, I think I was eight when he was elected into the Congress. So you're old enough to be aware that this is an mm -hmm. amazing. This is beyond... Eh, I don't know. Eight is about the time you're kind of just like, you know, that's just what dad does. You know, but as I got older, he was, he was in there for like 12 years. So yeah. I, uh, I didn't get in any trouble, so it was pretty good. Were you off the hook a couple of times because... No, no. Good? No, but it, it is good that uh, there was no social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sensing there might have been a, a little fun. Uh, to be had. I, I, this is so lame, but I didn't do. I didn't drink in high school. You didn't get into trouble. I didn't get into any trouble. I know, I, I, but I hate how people are like, "Oh, I was a bad kid," when right. they weren't. Right. You know that happens a lot. I feel like people are like, oh, "I was the worst kid." God bless my parents, and they yeah. they really weren't. Or the actors are like, "Yeah, I would have played pro football, but uh, hurt my knee." I'm sensing you had to have played some athletics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. given your size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and when was the growth spurt? Early, like uh, seven it, to seventh grade, sixth to seventh grade, I grew like nine inches. Okay, so for someone who never actually had a gro growth spurt ever, yeah, uh, why am I picturing like a werewolf in London where the bones are just stretching <laughs> out? It hurt because I, I don't know if I mentioned this. It's obnoxious to people who've heard it six thousand times. But I went to high school with Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach of the San Francisco Giants, for many years. But in high school, where he played center field, never pitched a ball on a championship team three years in a row, he was five ten, one hundred and twenty pounds, nothing. But in college, went to six four two twenty. So, what the hell? I Are mean, there actual things happening where you're like, oh my god, I'm growing? Yeah, well, I, I hurt. Like I would like, mom, and she'd come in and give me like. Remember Bufferin? Do they still sure. have Sure. Well, yeah, it's just Bufferin? ibuprofen. Okay, well, Bufferin seems to have fall, fallen off, though. If there's, there's a lot of ibuprofen right. brands now. But you're seventh, sure. eighth grade, and all you've got is Bufferin, but you're, you have agonizing I was in pain. nights. I was. Yeah. Oscar Slaughter's disease, you know what that is? Sure. Yeah, I had that in the knees there. Yeah, I guess I have it. Because what happens is the bones are growing, but the muscles and all the tendons aren't growing as fast, so they're getting stretched out. It's very painful. Look at that. It's coming from a man who also <laughs> went through several growth spurts. I, it's true. I, used, I was three feet tall until my senior year. <laughs> Shot right up. Yeah. Your career as a jockey ended at the age of 16. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you too. Uh, so you know right it's going well when you get right off into Oscar slaughter. Yep. Wow. So you're, you're already, uh, what are you, it's football, basketball by junior high? Mm -hmm. Not really? Mostly basketball. But... Baseball was good until I got bored of it. Football, I went to high school that didn't have 
a football team, so I was stuck with basketball. Probably my worst natural sport. Went to high school without a football team. Please mm -hmm. continue. It was small, private. You know, again, nothing bad. I went to a small private school. My parents <laughs> loved me. My uncles never touched me. <laughs> <laughs> Things are great. I got, but you I, had there's uncles. no way I can ever be funny. But you had uncles. Yes. Okay. They're dead. <laughs> well, that's fun. Now I can be right. right. There's some tragedy. <laughs> yeah. Finally. <laughs> um, what? Uh, so, uh, when you're growing up, then what are your interests? Since it's 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 seemingly barely sports. Well, it actually was a lot of sports. Uh -huh. I liked watching. I liked playing. I liked, you know, that's why I didn't drink in high school. Playing sports. Were really you just into it. full? Boring. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I suppose. But I was just. I mean, I, I had no interest. I still don't. Uh huh. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Good interview. Because I, I, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> there's some guitar in your life. Yes. Yes. I I played a little guitar. And when, that must have started when? Late. Really? Yeah. I was 30, probably. And you just decided I just one day. I quit playing video games and then picked up a guitar. Needed to do something with your I, hands. Yeah, and it turns out I could do it. Yeah. How does one find out they can do it? Because I've tried and there's no, well, I could just do this. I've always been musically inclined. I could play piano. Oh, you could. I could never read music, but I could always just play by ear. and do. So I've been inclined and I picked it up and it came pretty easy to me. When did the piano start? That was like when I was like eight. Oh, you know, were there like, lessons? Yes. Aha. But I was talking about this last night. I'd have lessons. I could never figure out how to read music. I just it right. won't, won't connect. Right. You know? And, uh, but I'd be playing with the teacher and she'd be like, uh-huh, now, and she'd be like, now read that part. And I'd just, just play it by ear because I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't read it. And then eventually she figured it out and I could never go back. <laughs> she figured Tragedy. Out, she figured out you were cheating. Yes. Um, so when you say play by ear and not read, was she playing it first? Because what is the ear actually drawing from? Well, she would play it first and wouldn't be like, I'm some savant that immediately could play it, but after what you know, like I just said, get in my hands. You and get it wrong a few it. times, yes, and of then course. you know what it sounds like when. But it's really, it'd be like that day at practice. I couldn't do it, and then that week I'd go and just kind of learn it, and then come back and be like, "Did you read it?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm reading it." Just play it. <laughs> so it sounds like the folks wanted a well-rounded kid. Sure. You got the, the the schooling, the piano lessons, the I was loved sports. The uncles, didn't the know. uncles were cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Uh, and and what what TV shows are mo and, or movies that are starting to catch your attention a little bit? Um, you know, coming home from school then it wasn't Friends like the kids have now. It was, it was Gilligan's Island. Sure, the Brady Bunch. Uh -huh. I've seen all of those probably mm -hmm. ten times. Cher was Schwartz fan, I guess. <laughs> sure was. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Happy Days. Mm. That was a good one. That was still on prime time. Then. Saturday morning cartoons. What are your options? What'd you have? Well, you're probably playing sports, but when you weren't, when no, you were younger. Yeah, no, I, I can't believe they don't have that now. They just have Cartoon Network, so they can do it whenever they want. But like yeah. Scooby-Doo, Grape Ape, Captain Caveman, the classics. Hanna-Barbera. Hanna-Barbera. So, okay, when it comes to live action, mm -hmm. you're sure when Schwartz got a guy. When it comes to animation, he's a Hanna-Barbera guy. Damn. What about Looney Tunes? Your Bugs Bunny. Oh, yeah, of course. That's, that's Come on. All. Well, the relationship between Daffy and Porky, that's where it's at. They were a good duo. I'm, I could talk about cartoons. Clearly. <laughs> uh, do you remember the relationship between Porky and Daffy? I think it was romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I See, I, were, I knew I there was something wrong with this guy. <laughs> we finally found it. <laughs> 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 it's like second. Yeah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Filet me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, siblings. Two older sisters. Okay. Now there's some fun to be had there when the two older sisters are bringing home their friends. And it wasn't because I was a huge mistake, a surprise. <laughs> and, uh, so there was a, by that you mean there was a gap. 14 and 12 years older than I. Whoa. 10 and 12? Uh, 10 and 15. Yeah. My sisters are 10 and 15 years older. So, so she understands the gap. Yeah, so it's like you have... That was my niece that did your makeup. <laughs> oh, really? So that's a, yes, that's my I eldest sister. I have nieces daughter. that are closer to my age yeah. than are my sisters. So I was very, I was kind of sandwiched between girls, but almost like an only child in there in, in the beginning. Right. So I had to do things to really have fun alone, so I learned to be an actor. Yeah, really though? Yeah. No, yeah. I, don't know. I could play well alone, I suppose. Yeah, so I, I have memories of that, of, of creating 
this is potentially odd. On the way to school, I became so fascinated that on the way to school, and I grew up with nobody in show business at all, my walk to school, I was in a movie. There was a camera that was somehow going backwards. I didn't know the mechanism or how anything worked. There was no dolly or steady cam. There was just a camera going backwards. I can't tell you how. And uh, my walk to school was being filmed. Not as a documentary, it was a part in the film. It was, I was acting in a movie. I, I Do you have a make-believe world like yes. this? Yes, well I still, and it started very young, but I still break the fourth wall to no one. <laughs> like, uh, like if you know, a girl I'm dating says something and I'll just be like, really? <laughs> like there's an audience there. And if she gets it, <laughs> she has a chance. Exactly. And if she doesn't, she still has a chance. <laughs> <laughs> because you're a guy. <laughs> oh, coffee is for closers. <laughs> I talk to the camera all the time. Yes. But not the camera. That's yeah. not there. That's it's fun. true. I yeah. It. It's I still, you know, yeah. I always wanted a show where you could do that. Like, let's say by the bell, Zach could always just like, can you believe she's acting like this? <laughs> I still, I want that show. <laughs> you, as a life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It would be the same thing then. You don't want to actually remake Saved by the Bell. You want that in your everyday life. No, I would like to remake that. Wait for it. Yes. We have to be a teacher now. Well, I'd remake it different. Reunion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Saved by the Bell reunion. We'd all be teachers. Sure. And I'd be the new, but. You used I'd to be, be students together. And now we all teach at the Sammy, same high school. Sammy, why aren't you typing? Huh? <laughs> this could be a show. Um, how about prom? Do we go to prom? Yeah. Why do I see you wearing the crown? <laughs> uh, I don't know that we had prom king and queen in my small little school, but I probably was it would have been. Was a co-ed? <laughs> was it co-ed? It was, co it was, yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. How small was it? Was there like... I graduated with like 28 people. Whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, small. So when you go... But we got picked on by all the big high schools in town, so... Oh, you did? Yeah. And what was that like? It was like... Are you talking fights picked on? <laughs> no, because we were too scared. They'd be like, hey, you're a pussy. And I'd be like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> um, college. I went to Auburn University in Alabama. Yeah. People always ask me why I went. The reason I went to Auburn is because it was big school with rolling admissions. I didn't have to write an essay didn't want to do that. I could get in and it was in the south warmer than where I was in Kentucky. That's literally These are why real I'm reasons. Right. Yes. By the way. Yes. These are the things an 18-year-old thinks about. <laughs> yes. That matter. Mhm. Mm I couldn't get into a ton of places. Uh, yeah. you know, mostly big state schools was Let's was not my undermine best Auburn. Mhm. Mm no, a it fine was fine institution. Fine. Very I had a great memories from Auburn. But you were not graduating with 28 kids. So my question is, this transition from a small... It was fantastic. Because? Because you could never, I could never meet all 24,000 people at Auburn at the time. And that was exciting to me. Every day, I could meet someone new. When I went to Sayre High School in Lexington and graduated 28 people, it was the same people every day. Yeah. And I still hate them. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> and, and, and also just leaving town. Yeah, fantastic. Did... Uh, was there a, tri uh, a trip that you made with family to see the place, or did you just show up on your own the first time? No, no, I, I did. Went down with a buddy of mine from the same school, and he, we both really liked it and went up, went down there together to ease the pain, you know, the yes. roommates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jay Atkins. What's up, buddy? Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. What do we think Jay's doing right now? I know what he's doing. He's real estate in Lexington. Still one of my great friends. Really? Mm-hmm. And how is... junior high. How is the real estate business in Lexington? Uh... It's booming right now, I believe, yes. Same everywhere. Yes, doing well. Well, let's, th let's give a, a very special shout out and thanks to our president. Hey, America's finally, finally great again. <laughs> man, oh man. And what a special day yesterday. Wasn't specifically it? Specifically for the country of ours. Yeah. It's, mm. When you get to wake up and there's like a nuclear civil war. Yeah. We're back. And also people driving cars into protesters in North Carolina. Yeah. That was super fun. Great Wonderful. day to meet a Jew yesterday. <laughs> super fantastic. Ha! <sighs> um, <laughs> so you, uh, you're off of school. You can't believe how many people there are. You're meeting every day. Are you in sports at all in college? Mm -mm. No, no, not of course good not. Enough. We're done with that. Yeah. 
So what are you focusing your attention on? Girls. And? And not my academics. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, I went down and I thought I wanted to be an actor. And I joined Auburn, got into the theater program. And what sparked that? Uh, what was the genesis of that thought process? Same, you know, reason I broke the fourth wall and looked to the camera. I always so, sort of wanted to do that, but I, I didn't know what to do. And how do you do Kentucky. it? Like, how do you what, do what it? Do you, I didn't know any actors. I didn't know anyone in entertainment. Right. I mean, the only, I'd be like the local news guy. Ah, how'd you get on TV? You know, I right. didn't really ask that to them, but there was nothing. I didn't know a way to do it. Right. And uh, so I got into the theater department there and quickly realized that that was, I mean, you could take classes without being in the theater department. And when you were in the theater department, you had to do like every other weekend, work the box office and do stuff that was inane and awful. And right. so I just joined radio, TV, and film, and then took all the theater classes. Nice. And you ended up doing plays. I did not really at Auburn because it was usually just the seniors and juniors. I left my after two and a half years. You, I lasted nine months. Yeah, I just why 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 did you leave? Why it felt like high school with ashtrays. <laughs> I mean, I, school really wasn't where my head was at. Me ever. either. Me either. I felt like I was wasting money, yeah. and just. I didn't care. Like now, I'd love to go back and learn some things that I didn't mm -hmm. give a shit about then. I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but when you leave, the plan is to do what? Be a big star. No, sure. To, 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 yeah. So you moved to? I actually did. I, I left and auditioned for a spot as an acting apprentice at Actors Theater of Louisville, which is actually a very big theater, like regional theater. And uh, like it was actually a huge break for me, yeah. Because there was nine boys, nine girls, and the others had all been in New York or Chicago pounding the pavement. I got, I auditioned and got in, and it was a really tough year. Of you have classes for free mm -hmm. in the morning with some really good teachers, and the rest of the day you just worked for the theater. And it sometimes you'd get to do a little tiny part on one of the main stages or something. Right. But it was a very tough year, but probably my biggest break. Yeah. Because it made you... Because I didn't know anything. Right. And I learned the art, you know, especially to learn theater first for someone who really wasn't super into theater, you know, I was into movies and TV and stuff, and to learn that way first, kind of like learning the classics, you know, before you start playing rock and roll. Yes. You know? Yeah. And you're applying yourself. And so, how long do you last there? That's one year. Right. It's a one-year program. And, and then, then I left and moved to New York. With the idea of doing theater? Yeah. With the idea of doing theater, whatever I could get, but I knew there was theater there, and I knew I knew how to do that now. Starting your life. Right. And so where were you a waiter? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny, I never waited. I uh, was a personal trainer. Wait for it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this was before that was a big thing. This was before you had to have a certificate. They just hired me because I was big. a big guy and, and I would just be like, <laughs> nine, ten, rest. <laughs> <laughs> you could count to ten. Yeah, yes. <laughs> And oh, we're gonna add some weight. Okay, <laughs> seven, eight, rest. You could spot yes. in a pinch. Yep. You could spot somebody. And that's all you had to do. Yep. And I could that way have my, if I had an audition, have my days open. Kind of smart and, and, and living situation. Uh, not good. No. That's, no. That, those are my favorite stories, especially in New York. Yeah. More so than LA. There's some shitholes here that people have to move into. Well, I went up there for a few weeks. I stayed with a friend of mine who had parents had a house on Long Island. Okay. That, that's like a vacation, though. Yeah, it was. But uh, I remember the first day I drove in to Manhattan, and I didn't mean to. I meant to go to Long Island, but I just there was no GPS. You oh, didn't no. do this. That, you oh, know, no, you I'm didn't in New York. have a phone. Fuck. Yeah, and I'm driving, and people are honking, and I'm, try I'm trying to be like, honk! <laughs> Hope he didn't kill me. And people told me in Kentucky, like, don't look at anyone in the eyes in New York. They'll rape you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somehow, I still don't know how I navigated my way out of there onto Long Island. Don't look at anyone in the eyes. <laughs> I swear they, they said that. And they were, that. couldn't have been more It was genuine. like when I moved here, they were like, don't wear blue or red anywhere. 
<laughs> That's the truth. I, and I was like, They're okay. not all as cool as Snoop Dogg. Yeah, okay, no blue or red. <laughs> um, got out there, but it was only, oh my God. the first day I spent that, took the PATH train in and got off on Christopher Street sure. in New York City. And it was, I did not know this, it was the gay pride gay, 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 gay. day. Sure. No idea. And I was on a path train with everyone going into the gay pride day <laughs> right. parade. And I thought I was on the moon. <laughs> I thought this was what New York was like every day. And I was like, I better start wow. sucking some dick here because <laughs> And I'm kinda of popular here. <laughs> people New Yorkers are a lot nicer. Yeah, I can look say. everyone in the eye. Kind of. <laughs> One eye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nice. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but quickly learned that wasn't it. But then eventually had to live in my car, but outstayed my welcome. Found a guy in a park. I was walking around who was smoking a spliff. We were talking him and his buddy, and he was like, I got my real estate license the other day. I knew a place. I didn't have a cosigner nor a job. I had a little cash I brought. And he said, I know a place in Manhattan you can, that'll take you. It was called the Breslin, 28th and Broadway. And uh, it, the reason I could get in there was it was a public housing that had just turned private. Oh, wow. So you obviously can't kick all the people out. Vagrants. And they were, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And I paid 600 bucks a month. Um, and I paid an extra like 40 to have my own bathroom. Best forty bucks. Oh my God! Ever yeah, spent. there was like the hallway with the uh, nasty, oh, nasty. So the own, that meant uh, get a studio with its own bathroom. Mm -hmm. There was no kitchen or anything though, and all I had a card table. Uh, a manager lady I met there gave me a little TV, and the cable still worked in there, so I was set. I got a like a little love seat uh, out in front of a church. You know, did it right, you know, and then got up there and then it just stunk of urine. <laughs> and, and I kept Tough it. Tough to realize until I would you get it. Spray it and never sit on it. <laughs> Ever once. I put like papers and stuff on it, but it, it was a shelf. Yes. It was a shelf. Yeah. And uh, the first day in, first night, I bought a futon. First night, woke up twice with like roaches. Oh. Like, ah. Bug bombed it two nights in a row, slept out my car again, came back. I'm sure I have cancer from that. <laughs> my life will be over from that. It, it was disgusting. And thought, I will stay here, you know, a couple months until I can get a job and get stuff going. And I stayed for six years. <laughs> and then, then I was like, I don't move. <laughs> I really just, Things are going okay. I rather really just stay here, yeah. Yeah, always great to bring the girl back there. Oh, yeah. Well, can I put an over under on the number of times you said, no, no, let's go back to your place? <laughs> go with the over. <laughs> Let me pick a crazy number 3,700. But when you're like 23 years old, you're a struggling artist. Who gives a shit? It's sexy. It's cool. Yeah. Look Ooh. at me. You know? No, no, that, don't that's, sit there. That's how, <laughs> you would say to her. <laughs> exactly. Don't sit there. The futon. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 yeah, not that's that. A, that's, that's a, a shelf. shelf. <laughs> I'm not trying to just get you on the futon, honey. I'm telling you, that's a shelf. That is a shelf. Don't sit on my show. The urine show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So how long are you at the uh, personal trainer job? Quite a while. I mean, Of I, those six years that you lived in? Mm, I, most of them. Yeah. But I was booking jobs and started doing stuff, and I, I was understudying on Broadway. You know, that was... That's huge. I, yeah, it was. It was, it was yeah. very huge. What was the first show you understudied on Broadway? A picnic. Mm -hmm. Kyle Chandler... And Tate Donovan, football were, dad, were, what you call him? yeah, football dad, were I call uh, him super eight dad. the two super parts, eight. the two parts I understudy and I never got. Kyle Chandler, who's the other? I'm sorry, Tate Donovan. Tate Donovan. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, they never gave you one. Those douches. That's not cool. They have to it give was you one. It cool. It wasn't cool. One time they even Tate Donovan was really he was sick, and they put my name out there like Josh Hopkins would be playing the role of whatever it's called, and uh, and he came in at the last second like, oh, I'll do it. The show must go on. Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you and Hercules. That, and that is why he's Hercules. That's right. 
That is that. <laughs> wow. That's why Jennifer Aniston left him. So that's he, the he reason. We wouldn't give up one performance um, for Josh. Yeah. Please uh, allow me a moment to thank our sponsor for today, Josh. If you don't mind, you're allowed to check your phone while I'm while I'm doing this. Uh, Littleton Coin Company is sponsoring today's show. Let's give big thanks to them. Have you inherited an old coin collection or an accumulation of coins and currency that you're not sure what to do with? Who hasn't? Who hasn't is right. Little co Littleton Coin is here to help. Littleton. For over 70 years, Littleton Coin has been helping people just like you sell their coins and currency. As an industry leader in collectible coins and currency, Littleton can pay you more. In 2016, the company's president, David Sundman, received the American, that can't be a word. <laughs> you went to school twice as long as me. Maybe you could, Numis, numismatist. There's no test, it ends with a C. New, okay. Numismatic? Numismatic, sure. Numismatist is, that, is someone who collects coins. Numismatic. Numismatic. Sure. You heard that word before. Nope. Nope. American Nus Numismatic Association, the ANA Dealer of the Year Award, and Littleton Coin is honored with the Better Business Bureau T Torch Award for Marketplace Ethics. So you know these people are the ones you can trust and rely on. Whether you're an experienced collector or someone who needs help identifying what the hell you have in your collection, Littleton Coin Company is the place to sell U.S. coins and currency. The process is incredibly simple. Simply visit littletoncoin.com slash chat show to learn more and take advantage of this offer. littletoncoin.com slash chat show. Littleton Coin is the company for you. And we thank them for their sponsorship of today's show. Favorite films in the 1980s? Pick two. <laughs> I don't know what films were in the 80s. Can you help me? Hard yeah. Bodies? <laughs> One. <laughs> Ski Patrol or... Raiders of, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a great movie. Oh, no. Uh, that's 80s? It's not... It's 81. Yep. Okay, so that's creeping in. Um, Jaws was 70s. Yeah, Jaws was in the 70s. 75. Uh, Jaws 3. Jaws, Jaws 3D. 3D was... Yes. That was <laughs> Did you great. have favorite movies growing up? Yeah, yes. I mean, like Star, I was a Star Wars. I was huge. Still there. huge Star Wars guy. Still. Yeah. Looking forward to the new one. The next I one. am. That's what I, I think. Uh, but my favorite movie of all time is, and it was a, it's the 70s, early, uh, Cuckoo's Nest. Sure. I mean, I think it's perfect. That's a great play. Yes. Right. Um, Cuckoo's Nest has a film, isn't talked about enough. Uh, I think it won the Academy Award. Let's look at sure it. Sure did. Sure yeah. did. Uh, Nurse Tur Ratchet won. Nurse Ratchet won. Mm -hmm. And did Jack win? He should have. No, he didn't, but it did win Best it Picture. It did win Best, picture, best picture because picture. it's one we had a trivia question. Alan Bakula? That was, that? name the best pictures that have a number in the title. One. So one flew, uh, the, so yeah, there's See, like, that's, there's I was like, flu? Yeah, yeah, how? Cuckoo. Cuckoo. And Cuckoo. also an actual Cuckoo. numerical number doesn't come to mind, obviously. Yeah. Um, Luke Allen, is it Alan Bakula? Who directed One Flew of the Cuckoo's Next? So, correct, yes. continue. European names for 400. <laughs> also, Amadeus, I believe, is Milos Forman. Yep. This is not a trivia contest. So, uh, what is the takeaway from you when you see a movie that stays with you like that? Oh. I'm always uh, interested in, in the films that influenced uh, artists. Uh, uh, I saw. Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid as a 12-year-old in a movie theater easily 10 times. Just kept going back, wanted right. to be back in that world. Wanted to live in this place where that happened. Obviously, that's not the case with Cuckoo's Nest, but there's something in it. It speaks to me, yes. I think it, that anyone... Randall P. McMurphy, let's just start there. Yes. One of the greatest characters in history of film. Or a criminal, not insane, shouldn't have been sent there. Well, that's all... That's what you came away. What, what did you come with? Same thing. <laughs> but it could be, you know, was he crazy? Was he, you know... He had moments. He was different enough yeah. that 
society thought he was could be crazy but so we didn't celebrate his differences we condemned them it, right. you know spoke to all of us who felt like we could we wanted to do more but everyone would be like no don't do that right and they will give you a lobotomy yeah yes that's what yeah. i took away from that yeah the idea and, and i don't even remember what his crime was uh well i believe he told i think he was a thief some kind no i think he he, he had uh messed around with some women that were too young yeah but i tell you doc you get down there that little red beaver and you know what i mean <laughs> Remember that scene? Holy <laughs> shit, he was not in prison for being a pedophile. That was, I think it's, yeah, oh, oh, and drunk and disorderly and getting in fights, and that was one of the things, it was a pedophile. He, like a, he was like, she didn't look 17, Doc, I can tell you that. Yeah. You know, he was. <laughs> yes. Wow, I remember that scene vividly, but now that you've mentioned it, but it, but it did not stick with me that, uh, well, obviously in the 70s, that term was not uh, something that, was uh, talked about, or I had good uncles too, mm -hmm. so I probably had made no real human connection to. Yeah, this was just a character. It, being I didn't know what character that even was yeah. really. When no, I, no, I just thought because I was probably sixteen or seventeen myself, and I thought, yeah, no, he's got a good point. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see some myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, did, it wasn't a an older man looking back on how creepy that was. Um, so you're understudying uh, on Broadway, it, 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 that's huge. I mean, I don't want to, It was in a young actor's life, um, and so do you end up doing any plays off Broadway or anywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did, you know, several, you know, a lot. The first, uh, and then I, I, while I was understudying, I got the first part in a movie. I'd ever done. It was called Parallel Sons, and it actually went to Sundance. First film I did went to Sundance. Pretty cool. What year is this? Um, 18. Sure. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, how, but how old were you? First. Four. Maybe, that, maybe that'd be easier if you remember how old you were. 94, 95. Sure. And um, it was. Uh, was there any notion that you would go to Sundance as well, or was this? I did. You did? Yeah. Yeah, it was unbelievable, but it's n not what it is today. Oh no, we we went to uh, I went to Sundance too in that same time. Um, now it's just production. It's like bah, bah, Sundance, and Sundance here, <laughs> that shit for free. <laughs> bah, 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 coming over here, it's a party. Yeah. Oh, there's Richard Kind with two giant <laughs> bags of swag. <laughs> like yeah. one of one of which was like a PlayStation. Yeah. Like it was a I game. don't even play. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to my nephew. He's gonna love it. How long are you here? Uh, and also, where either he had two bags. Sorry to go off on this. Sure, this but also, story. D dressed head to toe and stuff he already got for free. Yeah, so it was tags like, hanging yeah. off his jacket and his scarf and hat. Yeah, just a just a whore walking down the street. Uh, uh, but in '94, '95, I it mean, it was a different thing. Oh man. It was, uh, mm. it felt incredibly indie, the core of it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're, how, you're late 20s, early, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm er, mid, mid 20s. So this must have just been extraordinary. It was. As it an was experience. Fantastic. So uh, uh, when you get the part on, in the film, before we get to Sundance, mm -hmm. how exceptional of, of a situation is that for you as a young actor to just to get the film to be in the oh film. Un unbelievable Had i mean a movie i mean at that point there's no part of me that's beaten down by yeah. life right i'm actually hopeful and think this, this will be is the great beginning of and how easy was it to get it uh it's not <laughs> not easy but i mean at the time for you how how difficult was the process of getting cast in this film I mean, just like probably had to go back six times that's you a know, lot and different parts and you know yeah but yeah it was fantastic wow yeah did I, you have an agent at this point i did a little boutique sure something you know and then i think that helped me you know that being because i got that while i was understudying i think around that time is when i got i went to gersh my first big agency in new york mm-hmm yeah 
and then that helped and yeah so that really <laughs> helped <laughs> yeah and the experience of doing the you said this is your first film yeah where did it shoot upstate new york the adirondacks so you're on location mm -hmm. you're not coming back to the city mm -mm. you're staying up mm -hmm. i wasn't there that night uh for a kid in his mid-20s it's fantastic this is an extraordinary thing oh i mean anybody else in the cast we would know uh not that it matters not really not right. that i know but none of you are known no so no a similar age cast wise yes yes so uh, it feels like theater up in the upstate New yeah, York. yeah it was fantastic you know and, and i had to uh learn to smoke keep talking for the part like two of my main scenes were out back with like the main guy you know smoking on our break in a restaurant we worked at and i had never put anything to the lips and i it was disgusting to me and i remember being at movies where my mom would be like he doesn't smoke she could tell you know when the actor was like Pfft. well you now you know what she's talking about yeah so i'm like well i've got a i'm an actor yeah i've got to learn to smoke right and i i just couldn't do it until i you know had like six beers and i was like <laughs> <laughs> and now whenever i have six beers i'm like you want to have a cigarette <laughs> really <laughs> sometimes yeah sure mm -hmm. of course it's yeah. just in there yeah you ever try those herbal cigarettes oh yeah those are so much more disgusting yeah. than already very disgusting regular but cigarettes. they're also terrible for you yeah yeah so that helps mm. <laughs> so that helps because they're terrible for you yeah because regular cigarettes aren't that bad no as it turns out uh so this is an unbelievably exciting opportunity clearly and the filming goes well the mm -hmm. i mean I don't even know. You have nothing to compare it to, so it all just must be magic it every was, day. It was. Yeah. It was. And then it goes to Sundance. So you're probably thinking, this is what movie's making it. I'll like. tell you what time it was. It's not whenever this year, when I got back, shortly after I got back, and I thought, like, hey, everybody, I'm in a movie. <laughs> and I remember being over at a girlfriend's place at the time, and she had people over, and all of a sudden, this Bronco chase started happening. Yeah, June of 94. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when that was exactly fun holy fuck mm -hmm. watching the knicks game sure yeah they broke away there's a big story about that yeah in the recent documentary stuff um that kind of shits on your story of i was just in a movie when everyone's watching yeah. bronco chase <laughs> yeah that did and yeah. in fact that whole thing lasted quite a while so no one wanted to hear about your movie for months ever <laughs> this is the first time i've talked about it <laughs> Oh, man, how many of you from the movie went to Sundance? Because that first trip to Sundance is just, yeah, I, I don't care where you are Everybody that, that could, could possibly yeah. go went. This is a little indie with no real budget. You guys are paying your own way or no? No, they probably put something uh, together for you. I can't recall. Yeah. Probably not much if they did. Yeah, of course. I think they found a place for us all to stay, like, you know, one place. But I think I People probably paid on the for floor. myself to get out there. And so how old are you when you finally decide to go west? Not too long. Well, I was 24 or 5 and probably around 30. Well, well, see, I had some problems then because there's a lot of back, back and, and forth, forth sure. time where right soon after that I booked the G.I. Jane. I was getting ready to move. Thank you. And uh, to me and I, no, I uh, booked that. I was, I was getting ready to move to L.A. Mm -hmm. and then that took like four months to shoot so then I stayed in New York a little after that because I just didn't move finally moved out to LA and I was out in LA about three weeks when I booked my first television show regular and it shot in New York <laughs> <laughs> of course yes I just given up the Breslin oh. and uh, you didn't want to be living at the Breslin in a regular show well, anyway. that'd been, I, I would have I thought that was good it's one. tough not to say I've got a place in New York you know yeah. <laughs> While you're on a show, also. Nobody needs to know what it's at the Breslin or what it is. Right, exactly. Yeah, by Coastal. I got to hear a little bit. Let's not brush over the G.I. Jane. It's Ridley Scott, motherfuckers. Yeah, that was cool. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was that was big time movie. That's huge yeah, time. Yeah, that was... Are you one of the grunts? I never actually saw the movie. Um, yeah, that she's got like a little you know boat crew she's in with like six other people more kind of like the six others around her uh jim caviezel i was gonna ask he's 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 my boy yeah and we've talked at length about gi jane oh yeah and uh i understand you uh 
You guys got new, uh, it was, it had a real core going down there. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, I'm group. still really good friends with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Morris Chestnut and Greg Bello. Yeah. And, uh, we all st still really tight. So I'm assuming you were put through some version of basic training. Yes. In preparation. Yes. yes. It didn't last eight weeks. No. But it was put through with Dale. Real Dale Dye? Da yes. Yes, exactly. I would not have remembered that. I'm glad you did. Um, but all seals there there was you know 40 background and a lot of those were seals and a lot of all our trainers and stunt coordinators were seals which were really really incredibly nice people until they drink <laughs> different experience hey guys yeah and you know they'd be tough on oh, you gotta do this whatever and at night like we go to the bar and you hey, guys, fucking whatever and then they'd be like oh you're the actor huh Tough guys. <laughs> Going home. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Going to bed. See ya. Yeah. They're weird, weird cats. <laughs> really. Like, Demi had a pool party one time. She rented, of course, some mansion. We were at not a mansion. Larry's Hotel. <laughs> yes. And uh, had everybody over. And I remember all these guys were getting shit faced and starting to get scary to me and I jumped in the pool. Keith Willard. Sure. He's a stunt coordinator still, ex seal. Dives in after me and underwater, about 12 feet of water, puts me in one of these. No. Yeah. And I'm so proud of what I did. I just went limp. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to bore him out of this. What a great choice. Yes. <laughs> and he was like, You fucker. I'm just and playing. Then he just let go. And I came up. He's like, you just didn't fight. I was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are they going to write this obituary? I just thought I'd go to the yeah. Yeah. And then another guy at that party, Seal, drunk, ran into the kitchen and fell and got so embarrassed, like an eight-year-old, that he took all his clothes off but his underwear and ran out and ran onto the street and just kept running. A wise choice also. Yes, Demi's like bodyguard crew found him half a mile down and the police had already stopped him and they were able to commandeer him and bring him back without him being in trouble. <sighs> but that's kind of, and super nice during the day. And then that's how they make it through that stuff where I would quit, you know, they're like crazy ego. Yeah. Yeah, you've, at some point you have to believe you're a killing machine. Yes. Beyond and, your and, training. And the, the training they put us through and stuff, I, like physically I could do everything cold, I would have quit on all the cold stuff, and sleep deprivation. Fuck that noise. No. I would never, have, like if you had gone to Bud's and gone through the training, you wonder if, you know, I know I couldn't do it. Yeah. Just from that. Sure. Cold. Not fun. Like they put us in the way, do the stuff where almost hypothermia. And I was just like, I'm an actor, a Kit Kat, give me a blanket. I'm out of the seals. I need a cocoa. Yeah. Yeah. Did you tell him you used to play basketball? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> we actually did play them in basketball and killed them. And it was not good either. Then you did not do yourselves any favor. No, no. We By killing the actors seals. Actors killed the seals in basketball, in basketball. And then the next time the seals got drunk, they, did, they told us they didn't like that. <laughs> oh, no, they told you. They yeah. showed us. Yeah, so they don't not, like to lose. Let's not guys. make that mistake again. <laughs> they don't like to lose. Pays to be a winner. <laughs> um, it feels like a number of short-lived series before Cougar Town happens. Was that the first time it was five plus years? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like several one years or thirteen and. I done. killed a lot of shows. I was a you know, great show killer. <laughs> the Ted McGinley of your generation, I say. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The first show I did was New York Undercover. It was like year whatever. They were just really trying to get to the number to where you could what's syndication. It syndication. Dick number. Wolf show. Yes, and but they got to it, and after like six years of being up five years, done. So I killed that. Definitely killed some other shows. At one point, I went to um, Calista Flockhart. Ally McBeal. Ally McBeal. And that was a kind of a cool thing, joined that, you know. Hell yes. Canceled my year. Yeah. 
John Bon Jovi was on my ear though. That was cool. Which many That's how I met then? our buddy James Marston. Oh yeah. Yeah, we met on that, and so I killed that. Uh, shortly after that, I got this show with Re Rebecca Romain called Pepper Dennis. It was on the WB. Oh, yeah. Remember the WB? Pepper. Pepper Dennis. Dennis. It was like a funny one hour news show, like like we were news anchors. And uh, not only did we kill that show, I, it was over after one season, the, the WB folded. I killed a network. You killed a network? Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on our show, yeah. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when this was going to end. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. It's today. Yeah. <laughs> we don't make it to Ricky Gervais. Yeah. This is how over the house. He was never going to come on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sam still doesn't believe it's going to happen. I don't blame you. Well, um, you jinxed it anyway. too much by bringing it up every show. That's the problem. You've jinxed it. Well, I am the least famous person to ever be on this show, so this That's is a good true. shot. Don't kid yourself. By the way, I, I saw... we've had other show killers on this. Do you know Kyle Bornheimer? Show killer. Love Kyle Bornheimer. <laughs> yeah. He claims to own the crown. Well, so you have to struggle with him to get I that crown. I think he owns the crown. He's pilot killer. But 13 and I done. Think, He's done a yeah. number Got of 13 a and thousand. out. We yeah. all do. Yeah. Pilot, though. We've all got. I, I did a 13 and out with him, and while we're doing the pilot, I was the one saying, this is never going to go, it's never going to go beyond pilot, there's no chance of fucking going. We got picked up, and he said, yeah, yeah, but we won't go beyond 13, because I've never gone beyond 13. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle Bornheimer. Uh, we, we, are you ready for the uh, Kevin Pollock's Chat Show pop quiz? Yeah, yeah okay. of course. Uh, you should know that the pointing, uh, pointing, the scoring uh, point uh, uh, is 5 to 15 points possible per question. There'll be three questions. Okay. How's that? All right. Once the final score is tabulated, it will be posted on our website along with the current standing among the top 100. Are you ready? Yeah. Question one. Dave Keckner or Rob Riggle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer? Mm, your official? I'll go with Keckner at night, Riggle in the day. Correct. Question number two. Carl Weathers or the weather in Charleston? <laughs> uh, I'll go with Carl Weathers. Correct. Thank you. And the final question, Keith? Legree played uh, high school basketball. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. That puts you in the top five immediately. Congratulations. Wow, thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. Very well done. Wow. I did not expect you to do that one. Mm -hmm. I'm a little frustrated. I'd be the first Keith I knew, and it just <laughs> came. <laughs> well, you did. Um, oh, let's go back to Cooper. So, uh, when you get that second season, having had that happen so few times, what is Cougar the town here? We're going. Yeah. What is the temperature on the cast? And everybody? Because you've already told everyone, folks, I'm going to kill this it's show. It's over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. Well, then it was sort of like. Bill Lawrence, the sh creator, showrunner, and um, obviously uh, my wife on the show um, was a big star. Courtney Cox? Yes. And she had a good run going. <laughs> she had done well, and so did he. And they were both like, our good luck will overpower your bad luck. And it did. And I was very thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Six years. And a great lot, Culver. Yeah. It was. One of the all-time, no matter where you live in town. Yeah. It is a great lot. lunch. You don't have to go. To, you can just walk out and go to Culver City. Myriad of places to eat, drink, yeah. do whatever. Great Sometimes. history on that mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. Gone with the Gone wind. with the wind. It's a wonderful life. A few good men. What's that? I think <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Sound like he yes, said. Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz too, yeah. Wizard, Wizard of Oz was so... Wizard of Oz, yes, because that hotel right there on the yeah. corner is where all the little people mm -hmm. got into a bunch of trouble. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, bet. yeah. <laughs> bet Midler had her own sitcom in 2001. They shot it there. Bet? Bet. Yeah, it's called oh. Bet. B E T T E. Hmm. Says Killed. your million dollar money drop was also shot there. That's oh. weird. We can run past that. <laughs> um, <laughs> then there's a season three, then a season four. And so, I mean, Ian Gomez aside, <laughs> what, what, are, what are your. For, first of all, let, you know, let's go through the stages. Okay. So you get another. This, is, was there a pilot? A pilot. There was yes, a pilot. Yes. Because sometimes those shows are with people like Bill Lawrence and Courtney. It could have been a straight to series situation. Right. It could have. It was not. Right. 
And so, was there a juggling of, of time slots? What did you guys go through in the initial launch of the show? It was, but we were right behind or before Modern Family. Right. And started with better ratings. Sure. Good. So I was like, this, this little show, Modern Family, they might have to make way for us. They better hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They stick around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to them. Yeah. And eventually, that all evened out the way it evened out. But we were, I was just happy for a second year. I was, and, and by the end of the first year, we were doing well enough where it wasn't that, I was the only one scared. They were like, we're coming back, we're fine. And I was like, <laughs> do not say that. You don't know how this works mm -hmm. with me. And then, yeah, coming back felt like, I was just like, oh, okay, this is what it's like to have a job. Like, not for three months, but okay, we're going to go into that second year. Right. That was fantastic. And the second year goes really, really well. It does. It goes very well. Yeah. We had a ball. Uh, we're all getting along. Uh, you can't even deny that a third year is wildly possible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not even you can put the kibosh on it. Not even me. At that point. But I can't remember exactly, either after the second or after the third year, maybe it was, I guess maybe the third, I don't, we got canceled. This is the part I don't understand. Yeah, we got canceled. And then Bill Lawrence, who was Bill Lawrence. not just a very good writer, but a really good businessman. And they always say, when you get canceled, or, or if your pilot doesn't go, we all know, they say, well, there, there's some other networks they're shopping it to. Never really, pans out. Never. I mean, 100 out of 100. Never. Nothing comes from that. And uh, they said, well, it could get another network. And I was, sure. Good luck with that. Hello, agent. And it did. It got sold to TBS. Yeah. And then it was even better. Yeah. Because we were only doing 13 instead of 21 or 2, which is not as good for the pocketbook, but way better for your life. Hell yeah. And they didn't, you know, ABC, Disney, ABC, I mean, everything we said, no, 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 and there'd always be somebody, a handler. TBS was like, do whatever you want. We want the show you've been doing, and it just became a lot easier on everyone. Yeah. So we could say things we couldn't say. I mean. I don't know exactly what, but we could. Right. And that's when it really got fun because the writing at that point, they were really writing for our strengths. Right. And we all got along and no one was nervous or took it too serious, you know? So then that was the golden era for us. We'd just go out at lunch and maybe shouldn't have drank, but maybe if we all decided to drink together, we can't get in trouble. You know, no, it was. That's when a show is feeling its own. Yes, that was a great time. <laughs> um, it is, an, it, it is a, a, a rarity and a bizarre transition to go from a network and have a, a showrunner say, we're going to find another home and no one believes him. And it ends up being the best thing that could have happened for the show. Yeah. <laughs> These stories just don't happen. That was... Bill Lawrence and, and Courtney Cox with the great, they, their luck over mine again. Yeah. They were just made it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So you need to, when you make that call to agent, you just need to tell them, doesn't matter what the show is, we need to get a Courtney Cox and a Bill Lawrence. Yes. Those are the components. Yes. That's one of the things about this ridiculous business that, that do take a while to learn. It is the elements that make up the project well like the the pilot for that was I not very good you know I was like oh boy but if you can just get on the pilot most pilots aren't good 98 out of 100 stink up the joint pretty bad and yeah. you'll tell somebody about a new show you're watching you, you just get past the pilot exactly. Yeah. exactly and so it really started to round out and change you know and it's still one of those shows if you see five minutes of it you're like this is painful because you got to watch at least 10 minutes to understand the world that you're in so you understand oh they're not just acting really poorly it's a tiny bit heightened and it, you know it's like it's wacky and crazy and a little camp yeah at times exactly yeah but damn damn fun to do really fun I yeah. mean I every day I didn't know what would have show I, up I'd be dressed like Prince for an episode 
I have a real question about the show. How serious was the conversation about possibly changing the title when it was really no longer Cougar Town? Very, very serious. Yeah. Because it was making, that, that was one of the reasons it couldn't grow. Right. I wouldn't have watched it. Cougar Town, oh, old ladies and young men, ha <laughs> ha, funny. And I thought that, you know, for those who didn't see Cougar Town after the first year she and I we were neighbors at first we were dating full-on got married the next like it was nothing about it was just basically about a bunch of people who lived in a cul-de-sac and drank and that was basically what it was about yeah and uh drink town yes well they thought about but that was the time it's you know you look back at the times now that pe they were like well we really can't because people have already entered that on their DVR and if we change the name, mm -hmm. we won't get those DVR people. Numbers. Yeah. So they just really couldn't do it. And I wonder what it would have really done because if they had changed it to Courtney's here, Courtney Cox, Courtney Cox's show. <laughs> yeah. I think it could, you know, that. Just Courtney Cox and girl. friends probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you saw a version of the Larry King game. I did, I did. So you kind of know what you're in for a little bit. Right. So it's the bad Larry King impression. No pressure to do a good one. And your Larry, right before he goes to the phone, he looks into his camera and decides to share an opinion, really, or of something that happened to him, not to Josh, to Larry. <laughs> you are Larry. Uh, and then he goes to the phones and whatever the city is, damn it, you can't lose. Ready when you are, Larry King game. Well, thank you, Kevin. Last night, I solved my prostate problem. Back to the phones, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. <laughs> so we thought we were gonna get details. No, <laughs> nope. Larry decides for the first time it's in his 107-year-old life, he's gonna go a little private. It's a tease. It's nobody's yeah, business. I want you to come back that. in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Genius. Yep. Um, Thank you, man. It's sweet, sweet. Thank Honestly, you. I hope it was mostly painless. <laughs> no, it was for me, just probably not for the audience. No, no, no. Thank you very, very much. Please sit there uncomfortably while I wrap things up for the folks at home and around uh, what's left of the planet. Josh Hopkins, ladies and Jews, that's what you have. Very pleased, number 319 in the can. Uh, samey jammy, samey jammy. It's not samey jammy? Yeah. Why can't it be samey and jammy? We discussed it. <laughs> the lawyers are still jammy? debating. Is that it? Is it Seals and Croft. Yep. Samey jammy. Mm, nope. Ja no. All right, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. You can call me anything you like. Samey. Sam Samuel. Sure. Jamie Thank and Samey. Jamie and Sammy. Uh, Jane Fox on makeup. Uh, Dr. Evil Kenny Chan on the floor direction. Luke Allen, the greatest intern the world's ever known. So much more than that. Let's stop calling him in that. Luke Allen, one of the greatest unpaid producers this show will ever see. Uh, Ryan Noble, thank you again as always. Rune Kincaid on TriCaster. Thank you very much for sitting in the JMAC. Who did anyone miss? I missed I him. I feel like it went. Uh, you know what I didn't miss? I did not get a phone call. 10 minutes after he left going, oh, I forgot this, 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 and this. Could you please bring it? A flawless impression uh, yeah. verbally. I miss okay. not having to look over my shoulder and wondering, do the guys in the crow's nest think sound doesn't travel? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Wow, it's and, all coming out. And yeah. Corey Levin out. on post. We've shared too much. Uh, next week, Brian Cranston returns to the show. Yeah, can't wait for that. And uh, shortly thereafter and there on. Uh, Mike Starr? On the Mike Starr on the, tw the following week, the 27th. Yeah. Uh, uh, check the Twitter for more. Uh, Mr. Josh Hopkins, by the way, on Twitter. Uh, you'll find him there. Thanks uh, to everyone, and as always, get out of my face.